Hey everybody, <clears throat> welcome back. Um, today we've got a very interesting case. This is a gentleman who wants two bridges. Um, we have tooth number two all the way over to tooth number uh, four, and then five to seven. Uh, normally I don't like to put abutments on um, lateral incisors because sometimes they're narrow and short. Little roots may not be able to stand up to it. In this case, I think this is gonna be a great um, outcome for him because he's got a nice long root. Um, and it's fairly broad, so I don't see any issues long term. We'll certainly manage those as they arise. But here's the initial scan. He did have a bridge that went from seven and was double abutted on the two, four, tooth number four and five, which is an interesting way to do that. Um, so we're going to give him an extra tooth in the back uh, and see what we can do. So the first step I'm going to do is just position these. Um, let's see if I can get that to where it's a little more straight on. I'm going to position these. Uh, the arch so that it replicates where it is in his mouth. I'm trying to line up this uh, incisal plane, occlusal plane, uh, and then just make sure everything works from the standpoint of the orientation in the mouth. Um, we're setting the model axis. Um, next step, once it pops forward here, um, will be to do the margin. Now I, I will warn you, anytime I'm doing a big case like this, I, I take time to save uh, very frequently. Um, so I would recommend that you always save. And I'm going to go ahead and move my face so it's up here. Um, all right, and I'm going to hit save. There's my save button. Uh, just so that each of the steps as we move forward is safe so to speak. Um, oftentimes we get in a situation where a lot of memory, especially with some of the 4.5 uh, software version updates, a lot of the memory will kind of freeze up and crash and stuff, and I've had some issues with this particular unit. So um, I'm going to go down here to the dots. I'm going to close that so I have more space to work with. Um, let's go ahead and marginate from the distal. I'm going to click on the bridge here, uh, and we're going to marginate tooth number two, as you can see right here. I'm going to go into manual margin mode by hitting the space bar or clicking over here. Uh, I'm just going to work my way around. It's a little rough on the facial. And we'll zoom in a little bit farther. And you can pan and rotate as you're uh, marginating to get a better view. So if I press and hold the right button, I'm going to pan and I can zoom and I can press and hold that left button and rotate. So depending on where you're at in your margination and what you want to see, you can always move the modeling around just a little bit. And so I was taught when I went through my training, if you're ever in doubt about where a margin is, take it a little outside where you think it is. Um, you can always trim it back once it's bonded in place. It's a lot easier, maybe better, uh, to trim back the margin than it is to trim back the tooth. Now, either one of those may not necessarily be a bad thing. So that's tooth number two. Um, we're going to go ahead and jump over to tooth number four here. So we had, a, like I said, a PFM uh, bridge that was on these two teeth. Um, double abutted. It took a heck of a time getting it out of there. So I'm going to go back to manual mode again. This is the space bar where it goes from green and auto mode to white and manual mode. We're going to work our way around. Rotating and panning as we need to. Double click to end. If I want to punch in and correct some areas, I double click. All right, so there's the bridge two to four. Let me pull that down so you can see it two to four. All right, we're going to go to the bridge right here, five to seven. Same thing, I'm going to rotate and pan, get it in a position where I like it. Uh, we're going to double click to start. It automatically starts in auto mode. Sometimes that'll track your margin real well. I almost always immediately go to manual mode by hitting the space bar. Um, for me, I'd prefer to do it myself. Now, sometimes the, uh, well, I guess I should correct myself. With the new 5.0 software, what I've seen and heard is this step will be greatly simplified for us with some of the um, new algorithms and the margin finding tools. Um, so I'm looking forward to that. 
Um, I think honestly, uh, these margins are one of the more challenging things, especially for distal, uh, distal, <laughs> especially for dental assistants to do. Um, these margins tend to create challenges for them, um, just because uh, it's hard for them to see exactly where it is. Um, anyway, so there's tooth number five. Let's go to number seven. All right, double click to start. Again, it goes into auto mode. I'm going to hit manual. Come around here. A lot of times that last little leg of the margin, the computer will be able to uh, jump into it and finish it for you. Okay, so now we're going to go ahead and do tooth number eight. Double click there. I'm going to again go to manual almost immediately. Now the only time I'll, I'll leave it in auto mode is if I've got an inlay or an onlay or a super gingival margin on a crown because those are super clear in the computer, at least in 4.5, which is what this is. Um, the computer can't differentiate gingival tissue very well from tooth surface, um, at least based on my margin preparations, my margin design. Now you see here it looks like I'm actually a little bit below the margin, so I'm going to correct that. I'm going to double click and I'm going to punch in and bring it back up just a little bit so it's not falling off that little ledge. All right, that's number eight. Now we're going to go down here into number nine. I'm going to double click. Hopefully we've got enough of a clear margin edge and you see the auto finder does a good job there, but there it kind of loses it. So now I'm going to switch to manual and zoom in, pan over a little bit. Always, if you're ever in doubt, go a little bit wider than you think you are. Um, makes it a little easier in the end. If you've got a crown margin that's a little too wide, then a crown margin that's a little too narrow. All right, so let's take a quick look at what we've done. We've got two bridges, tooth number two, tooth number four, a bridge with a ponic tooth number three, then five and seven with a ponic on number six. And then eight and nine single unit crowns. I think our, our uh, path of insertion is gonna be fine. I don't see any challenges. We're gonna go ahead and design and mill eight and nine, or I'm gonna mill eight and nine first. We'll get those fired so we can put those in first and then the bridges will come after that. But I am gonna click save here. Make sure all this data is saved. Um, margins sometimes take a while, and you don't want to lose any of that data. Okay, so now we're just going to cross our fingers and see what the computer gives us. <laughs> Are you ready? <laughs> I feel like I need some inspirational, like Olympic music right now, you know, like uh, summon the heroes. theme song of one of the Olympic teams. All right, so we got some proposals. First thing you'll notice, of course, tooth number nine is way weird. So we're going to see if we can correct that. Um, let me turn on our lower jaw and just see where the positioning lies. So he, um, one thing I, I did before um, is I took a, a pre-scan um, as a gingival mask, but right at the very end, the computer um, correlated wrong areas, so it didn't end up working out, so I deleted that. Um, anyway, so, but he was edge to edge, his bite was edge to edge, so we're going to see if we can correct that to some degree. Um, but if it ends up edge to edge, you know, cosmetically, he's not concerned about it. He's a good old cowboy. Very nice gentleman. Okay, so I'm going to turn off the lower jaw. Um, first thing I'm going to do again is hit save. Um, I always, always, always um, will save, again, at multiple steps, but at these real critical steps once you get proposals, because right now all that data is still being held in the, in the RAM of the computer. Um, and as we go forward, that RAM is going to fill up. So if I can free up the RAM by saving periodically, 
um, then it's a little easier. Okay, so first step, um, you know, at this point I'm going to make a decision. Do I want to go ahead and leave um, these designs as they are? Do I want to get a biogeneric or a biojaw proposal? Um, generally, I think we can work through these. So I'm not, I'm not going to um, redo everything. I'm going to start positioning, though. Um, if you've watched any of my other videos, you know that um, you always start from big to small. You work from positioning to finish. So we're going to get these positioned a little bit more favorably. And I'm going to turn off this button so that I can now control everything. Let's see how that looks. We're going to pull this guy over to... Uh, this dang keep contact button, it drives me nuts sometimes. And let's pull them forward just a little bit. So that this is me rotating the incisal edge toward the lip. And then we're going to move those crowns just a little bit. Now you can see down here we've got way thin, so we'll have to thick, thicken that up. Um, and our you know proposals are still a little wonky. There are some other ways around this, and for those of you that are real comfortable with BioJaw, yeah, definitely you can jump into BioJaw. Um, I'm not going to redo everything because um, I feel like generally it's it's okay, but I am going to do a lot of uh, manipulating here. Just remember each of these major steps. Is that too far buckle? Yeah, we've got these are a little too far buckle. Um, each of these steps you want to save at every step. So I, I usually will spend uh, quite a bit more time working on these. Uh, let's see if we can do this anatomic. Working on these anterior teeth than I will spend working on posterior teeth just because of the nuance. Boy, that's interesting. Why is it doing that? All right, let's see if we can correct that. Come on now. Sometimes you have to encourage the program ever, ever so slightly to get it to do what you want it to do. And they're starting to look like teeth. Starting to think about looking like teeth. You can see we've got some odd curvatures over here, which we'll need to address if the software will cooperate. Um, one of the things that I do like sometimes and I don't like sometimes is how it automatically selects which tooth it thinks you're working on by which tooth you're mousing over. Um, so for me that tends to create, let's see how far that comes out for, no, that's not bad at all. Uh, it creates some frustration sometimes um, just because you'll be moving around and you'll go over a tooth and boom it's gonna select that tooth instead of the one you're working on. Sometimes that bogs the computer down just a little bit. So these distal gingival line angles on central incisors are absolutely crucial to get right. Otherwise it looks like a trapezoid, you know. Um, so make sure whether it's in the design like we're doing now or in the post mill that you get those nice and rounded so the emergence profiles look right. Um, if your emergence profiles are off on those distal gingival line angles, then your whole smile is going to be kind of wonky. Um, I find for me personally, Oftentimes that distal gingival line angle can create um, either a very natural and aesthetic outcome or something that looks really bizarre, you know, like a chiclet. And we certainly don't want to be accused of having chiclets <laughs> for teeth. Uh, come on, computer, stay with me. Every time you go down, it thinks you want to switch between restorations. So I usually get to a point where I've realized that I've uh, allowed for enough design so that I can finish with um, post mill processing, you know, in in the in the lab with a handpiece or a, you know a carborundum disc or a, a high speed burr. Um, I don't want to spend five hours making these little nuance adjustments on the computer that I could spend five minutes or 
thereabouts, um, making changes in my hand. You know, most of us, even though these computer programs are fantastic, most of us can still, you know, trim or carve down an area of a tooth a lot more quickly than we can, um, you know, make these little fine adjustments like adding the mammalon <clears throat> or the uh, grooves on the facial. Um, that just takes a lot more time to do it digitally than it does oftentimes um, in your hand. So here I'm just adding a little thickness where I pulled it back there. I want to make sure we have enough edge strength in that Emacs. Okay, so generally those crowns look pretty good to me. Generally. Um, let's see. Okay, so I totally lost my train of thought. Don't remember what I was saying. Maybe when I'm editing this video I'll look at it again. Um, we had this problem yesterday as well. We didn't have the right shade of block and so we ended up needing to use a bridge block for three of the crowns for the same patient and it turned out just fine. I mean it doesn't matter. Well, let's see, we have eight, three individual ones. Just, just use the bridge block. That's okay. fine. Yeah. Um, yeah, end up being just fine. Um, those bridge blocks are you know more expensive naturally but if you can get just as many crowns out of a bridge block as you can out of uh, you know a pack comparable pack of individuals you're probably just fine so let me do a little bit of editing here um, I would suggest when you're doing multiple cases like this that you don't start milling until you're done with the design of everything um, because sometimes you'll make one edit and it'll have a cascade effect on lots of the teeth. So, sorry, that's kind of hidden by my face. You'll probably notice me doing that. I'm sorry. I'll get my face out of the way. Let me turn that lower off. We don't need that lower model on. All right, and if I could just get that to stop popping up, I really don't need to know, you know, a hundred times that I'm switching between restorations. It's a little bit bothersome, see? <laughs> that lower section just keeps popping up. Let me move this over here. <clears throat> One of my favorite things is the ability to change the baseline on your Pontix. So if I right click, I can edit this baseline, kind of like when we edit an implant crown baseline. So you see the proposal the computer gave us there is real narrow. So I'm going to go ahead and widen this so I get a much better uh, emergence profile on this particular unit. You can make it, you know, ridge lap or bullet or modified ridge lap or whatever you want. See that? creates a lot better workability with us. Um, now let me go over here and we'll edit this baseline. Um, I'm not afraid to do a ridge lap um, design on a bridge um, because, and here's my, here's my philosophy, if I can get a piece of super floss in the contact um, and if I have a concavity right here, generally you can leave the super floss down here on the lingual and pull the buckle side over here and now you're able to get under that concavity if these areas are deeper. Does that make sense? So it's kind of like flipping the towel over your back and then turning, you know, so you're able to do it <laughs> this is me dancing, able to do it um, in a little different um, way to get down to that. Let me bring that baseline down just a little farther. So our patient incidentally um, he doesn't have temporaries on. He's still in the office right now. Uh, well, he went out to grab a bite to eat. <laughs> so he's got, you know, things. Um, he's driving around somewhere. Um, so let's see where we're at. Um, eight and nine are still showing minimal thickness violations on the connectors. Uh, let me fix the occlusion here. You know, he was edge to edge, and I'm not going to alter that too much except in the anterior for cosmetics. Um, I am going to increase this. 
thickness, and then we'll start working on our connector thicknesses on our bridge. Bridge is plural. All right, so since this is a lateral, um, I am going to take all excursive, I didn't do um, articulation mode, but I'm going to take all contact, and after we um, drop the bridge in, I'm going to take all excursive movement contact off of that uh, canine. I don't want to risk any type of a failure because of hyper excursive or you know protrusive or mediotrusive or laterotrusive or any other type of trusive contact. Um, we're going to make sure that's not an issue. Now I'm generally very leery about increasing the contact thickness on the buckle because it becomes very obvious. Um, it tends to look like a giant blob. Um, now we're green. Oop, come on back to me. Now we're green here on this con connector. If you click on the connector, you can see that it's 17 anterior. Normally they want 16 millimeters. Um, so that connector there, um, but between 6 and 7, still a little less than um, what protocol calls for. And I would like to give this patient, get out of there, um, the highest possible chance at long-term success. So I'm going to increase the thickness of the anterior connector, and you can see now we're past that minimal threshold. Now one thing I'll warn you is when you're doing these connectors, you always want to look internally, because sometimes, you know, the ponic's here, sometimes that ponic connector will come through your prep, and you know, in these two areas, because we made it too wide. Um, so when that happens, you can't seat the crown or the bridge, or the bridge, um, and it creates issues for you. Um, it, sometimes it, it seats, sometimes it's not even close, and we're pulling our hair out trying to figure out what's going on. So just be cautious of that when you're adding to these connectors, and I'm going to blend that down a little bit, um, don't overdo it, okay? Um, facially, that looks okay. we got a little bit of a bulk here on the canine. That one there. Oh, let me add that back in. Okay, let's go to um, our other bridge. You're still not quite thick enough on our connectors. So as you'll probably notice, my favorite tool is the circular shape tool. Um, when adding to these connector thicknesses, I'd suggest you add to the abutments instead of adding to the pontics as much as you can. Um, the pontics tend to, uh, as we add to them, they tend to create uh, really weird um, bulbous overlappings, <laughs> if that's a thing, on the abutments. So you can see we've got a real thin area here. This was a, a tooth that did not have a bridge, and so I think I was in uh, under prep mode. Um, under prep that just a little bit, so I'm going to make sure that I compensate for that. I don't want any thin spots um, on this bridge abutment, especially with him opposing it. With a, He just has a first molar down there, I believe. Um, you see that solved all of our connector thickness problems. So now we've got good connector thickness. Now we need to worry about, let's take a look at our uh, buckle emergence profile. We don't want these like this big lumpy bumpy thing here. I'm going to blend that down with my smooth tool. Uh, hello, smooth tool. Now we've got some blue showing up there. Um, and I know that my parameters are set at 0.8 on the... Um, I can't even see that. It's behind my face again, isn't it? Tell you what, let me do this. I'm going to move my head down here. Probably should have done this in the beginning because I'll get my face out of the way. Okay. All right. So let's smooth. Blend just a little bit, and I'm going to go over here. Okay, now let's make sure we have nice occlusion. I'm going to drag the whole tooth up a little bit. I want a little bit of red. You know, he was, um, he didn't have any posterior stops when he was closing because at least on this side, so I know he's overclosed. Um, and I know he's edge to edge on that side. 
So let's turn on our lower jaw. So you can see we don't have much contact here. So rather than moving the whole tooth and changing our contacts, I'm just going to grab that whole occlusal edge. Well, I guess I am moving the whole tooth. Um, and drag it down just a little bit. Um, I'd much rather have a little bit lighter contact um, than over contact, but I definitely don't want no contact. Um, we're saved. You'll notice this lateral is still a little wonky over here. Um, let me just take out the smooth tool, um, smooth it a little bit, and then we're going to do some incisal variation. does look like we're a little bit wider still on number nine. Okay, so I just hit save. Let's go ahead and group these together. And then I'm just going to do an incisal variation on the anterior ones. All right, I'm not going to do any on the lateral or the uh, posterior. Um, now we're going to go to our tools. Show all our tools. This hides some of them here. See that? Uh, incisal variation. I'm going to turn it up and zoom in so I can see a little bit better. And I'm going to go to two. Turn that up even more. Now let's try three. Yep, the three tends to give us um, variation all the way down. Let me pop through these, so you can see there's one, which is pretty good. And as my, my understanding is, number one is the most common. There's two. And there's th three. <laughs> so maybe we'll leave it at one. Um, 50% is awful high. Let me turn that down a little bit to about a quarter. And I'm going to hit apply. Okay. So when these crowns come out, um, yeah, you know that does look a little bit wonky. Looks like eight is two. Okay, that's good length. Okay, so I'm going to do a little bit of, let's reset this so we let go of the grip on all of them. I'm going to do a little bit of fine tuning here. Let's pull that back just a smidge. Let's turn off our grid. I'm going to use my smooth tool to alter this inner proximal just a smidge. That looks better already. Okay, now we're going to turn off the arch. And let's check our contacts. Red's too heavy. There's no contact on the disco. I'm going to bring this down about halfway, and then we'll bring this down the other halfway. Otherwise, you end up with nothing. Um, but I do need to add to this contact. Otherwise, you'll end up getting food stuck everywhere. All right, let's check our contacts guy. Okay. I'm 
I know that's the mesial of the abutment. I'm just going to come back to there. I'm, you know, I'm just a, but I have a hard time seeing these mineral thicknesses. I need to widen that just a little. I know I just adjusted that down. Okay, let's turn back on. So I'm going to do some post mill processing when these anteriors come out. They're a little too bulky, um, but the computer's not quite doing what I want it to do. Uh, pull that back a little. There we go. Now we're getting a little better. One other thing, you can kind of use this frenal attachment as a guide of where the midline should be. <clears throat> All right. Okay, let's get these crowns a millin. Yeah, man, those still just don't look quite look the same length, I mean width. Some of it might be my favorite, that distal gingival line angle, I guess. Well, we'll mill these guys out, and then if there's something wonky about it, we'll just re-mill them. Okay, we're gonna mill number nine first. No. Okay, so since we only have 32 millimeter blocks, I'm gonna roll this sucker down and put it in a 32. I'm gonna mill the two anterior crowns out of a bridge block. So you always wanna leave it at the edge of the block. Some people will move it if you have a shortened block. So if we mill this and then Try to use it again, we want to leave it still at the edge of the block because what happens is the computer, the milling machine will measure to where the end of the block is and then if you've moved it past that, now it's going to start milling past the end of the block. Does that make sense? All right. Now it'll take a long time to mill. <laughs> Cheers.